Let's start with the basics. I'm confident that when it comes to curb sliding, anyone can master the basics. All you need is a low height surface that's flat or has a downward slope to it. You stand on top of it and then sprint and time your crouch button to slide. That's it. The better the crouch timing, the farther you're going to slide. That timing is slightly after you leave the object. Sprint, slide. Just like that. If you want to go even farther with your boost, you can sprint, slide, and then jump to carry that momentum into your jump to go even further. Any flat surface that's this height is very easy to learn, like to start on. So here's another example. Sprint, slide. This one as well. Sprint, slide. Any low height surface, there's no real lineup or setup to it. It's really just down to your slide timing out of sprint. I'll show a few more good examples. Here's a good test on whether you've mastered the basics and you can use this as a starting strat. You want to sprint, jump, land on this box, time your slide for the first boost, land on the sandbag, slide again, land on this object, slide, and you can grab the sniper, skewer, whatever center map, take it down to bottom mid. Just a general rule of thumb for curb slide timing. If you hit your slide timing too early, you won't really go anywhere. Your Spartan will kind of trip just like that and, and pause. That's if you hit the slide too early. If you time your slide too late, you're just going to get a normal slide and not a boost. If you time the slide correctly, you will get a boost. That was a too late timing. You will get a boost. And how good that boost is depends on how perfectly you time that crouch after sprinting off an object. Now, because you can slide very early in this game, you can slide basically instantly after you start sprinting. You've got a lot of flexibility with this mechanic. If you take a ledge like this, which is a low height ledge, there's not a lot of space to it, though. You can still hit a pretty nice curb slide off of it. The difficulty for a little ledge like this is you don't have a lot of time and space to execute. What you really want to make sure you do is make sure you peg that left stick forward before or hit the W key before you hit that sprint button. If you press the sprint button too early and your left stick isn't already forward, you might not sprint and that could mess up the move. So you really want to be kind of diligent about pressing the stick forward, then hitting the button, then timing the crouch to slide out on these tight ledges like this so you get the slide. Now, things can get a little bit trickier when we're dealing with objects that are different heights and different shapes. For this object, for example, you can see the other side of it is taller. The timing here to hit the slide is different. You want to time your slide a little bit later and right before you hit the floor. If you mess that timing up, it's also a little more punishing. You'll trip and go nowhere or get that normal slide. Whereas with the shorter ledges, even if you do have kind of an early timing, you still do get somewhat of a boost. You don't really get that with the taller ledges. Fully understanding what is going on behind this mechanic, I think is important. So what I'm gonna do is my best to explain the science behind this technique. Now bear with me here, but the way I see this is imagine every object, every ledge in this game, having like an outward curve coming off of it down to the floor. And then on that outward curve, there are certain sweet spot timings. If you sprint off an object and you're aligned with that curve and you time crouch within that sweet spot, you're going to get a boost. But if you sprint off an edge and for whatever reason, you're not aligned with that curve, let's say you're too far out, no matter what timing you press crouch, you're not going to get a boost. So your distance from the wall is important in hitting these slides. If you can sprint off an object and hug it close down to the floor, you actually get access to a second sweet spot timing right before the floor. And if you can hit that, you're going to go even farther. You get an even bigger boost. As far as I'm aware, there's four main things that can alter the speed and the effectiveness of a curb slide. Your forward momentum from sprinting, your downward momentum from falling, your distance from the wall as you fall, and your distance from the floor when you hit crouch. The best, most frame-perfect curb slide you could ever hit is one with full sprint speed with as much downward momentum as possible, as close to the object as possible, while timing crouch as close to the floor as possible. For some ledges, some of the taller ledges that we'll look at later, the only way to hit a slide off of them is to hug that wall as you fall. Any other approach is going to put you too far away from the wall and outside that invisible curve, making a slide impossible. When it comes to shorter objects with flat or downward curved surfaces, as far as I'm aware, no matter how quickly you sprint off or approach curve sliding on these objects, you're never going to go outside that invisible curve. You're always within it, meaning the only thing you have to think about for short objects is to just sprint and time your crouch to slide. You're never thinking about positioning. That's why this is a good starting point. For the higher ledges, depending on how tall they are, depending on how they're shaped, you're going to have to start thinking about how close you are to the wall, how fast you're falling. There's a lot of layers to this, and that's essentially the science behind it.
So let's access those layers. Let's peel this onion a little bit because there's a lot of interesting depth here and it's difficult to understand and apply. But once you figure out how it works and you start using it correctly, it's just fun in the end of the day. That's really it. It's fun sliding around on maps. It's not a get out of jail free card. This is not, you know, an instant win button. It's if anything, you're going to die more trying to slide if you don't master the other fundamentals in Halo. But if you can appropriately weave it into your gameplay, it'll completely change your approach to maps it'll just make halo infinite more fun let's start with object shape and how this affects your upward and downward momentum leading into a curb slide the best case scenario for a curb slide is to find a downward sloped object like this and cut off it with a curb slide like this the beauty of of an object shaped like this is because it's a downward ramp you're getting additional downward momentum into your slide and that helps ensure you hit the curb slide and you go even farther when you slide out so if you can find ramps like this and cut off the side of them and especially if you're going from a higher point rather than one even lower the more height you're coming off of the farther you can get that boost up to a certain degree if you're too tall remember if and we'll deal with this later if the height is if it's too tall of a ledge then you might not hit the slide but this is perfect you just cut off time slide and you launch off what you need to make sure you look out for is any sort of upward momentum before sliding if for whatever reason your Spartan is propped upwards before sliding, you're never going to get the curb slide. And this is a perfect example. This is curb slide height. But if I sprint off this in time I slide, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because there's an elevation change here. This girder is slightly taller than this box. And as I walk over it, it props me upwards and it disconnects me from the ledge and disconnects me from that invisible curve. So I can never hit the slide. The only way to hit the slide here is you can jump and land specifically on the object sprint slide off like that or off on a diagonal or what a lot of people do is they sprint and then for a brief moment they walk horizontal to level themselves out and then slide off and you can do that all in one sequence you can sprint forward and you kind of turn your stick you can see it on the overlay i'm turning my controller stick left to level me out before i time that slide input and there's a little dexterity to it but that can level you out so you don't get propped up and you still get the slide so make sure that you notice areas of maps where this is happening and apply that process to other areas. And this is a perfect example. This little lip, that props you up and it ruins your ability to slide here as well. So if you want the big boost here, you got to kind of go level with the edge of the ledge for a second to give you access to the slide, if that makes sense. So I sprint out and I kind of level myself out with the white portion, or you could do that same kind of process where you kind of like go horizontal for a second. My approach personally is to hug the corner, and then give myself that extra second to land on the white and then time the slide boost through the hallway. So make sure this is something you're thinking about when approaching curb slides on all maps. Take recharge in the elevator in the bottom floor, for example. There's a lip there. Same approach there. You want to make sure you level yourself out before sprinting and sliding off. In general, being parallel with a ledge and sprinting along the edge of a ledge like this is a great way to approach curb slides in this game. It, it gives you more time to pull off the slide and it allows you to hug the wall as you fall, letting you access bigger boosts and more advanced applications of this tech. So let's get into that. Like I mentioned earlier, your fall speed and distance from an object can affect your results when curb sliding. For example, this box is curb slide height. I can just sprint time a slide and fly off it like so. But if I can stand on this box in such a way that lets me hug the wall as I fall and fall quickly, I can access a later slide timing and boost even farther. This process is kind of tricky, but it can have a pretty big impact on your gameplay if you master it. There's sort of two things that's happening here. I'm hugging the wall, which is giving me access to that slide timing, but also in general, simply just tapping and walking off of the edge of an object in this game will fast fall your Spartan. It's just a hidden mechanic where if you kind of just tap off the edge of an object, you fall very quickly. That downward momentum is helpful for a big boost, and that's why you want to line up a perfect landing on the edge of a ledge if you can. So I'm standing on the edge and then I sprint forward and I turn off diagonal on the left stick to fly off the edge of that ledge and access this farther, more powerful slide. The timing of the slide is later than usual. Like if I go for just a standard curb slide on this box, it's a slightly earlier timing to hit it this way. But if I'm going from the ledge and sprinting and coming off on a diagonal, it's a later timing. The result is a bigger launch. I've also recently noticed that there's a habit that I've got here that I kind of just do subconsciously. And I think it's actually important when approaching this technique is I, if you look at my right stick, I sort of flick it down and then up. And I think what I'm trying to do is hug the wall. That's my approach to hug the wall. So it's a combination of 
the diagonal out with the left stick, but my right stick is actually looking down diagonal, and then I'm immediately flip, flicking it back up so that I can level my aimer out and shoot somebody after, because I don't want it to compromise my aim. So there is actually a little habit that I have of like a, a slight downward diagonal turn with the right stick, and then I immediately level that stick out. And the combination of that plus the diagonal can keep me close to the wall and let me access a big boost. Beyond the extra launch speed, what's really interesting about this is it gives you a lot more flexibility in how you approach curb slides. For example, the normal way you'd hit this is to sprint all the way off the front of the box and then time your slide and fly out, which is effective. This works perfectly fine, but you're a little bit more exposed when you go for it this way as opposed to hitting it off the back corner of this edge and flying even further. I'm less exposed from the origin of the slide, basically. My weapon's ready earlier. I can shoot more freely, basically. And this is subtle, but another example would be the alleyway in Bazaar, the little ledges in the alleyway. You can access a slide earlier than as opposed to waiting until you run all the way off the edge. You get that big boost. You get the freedom earlier. Of course, the extra launch speed is helpful as well and has a lot of applications. This is a great place to practice it. If you get this one down, you can skip your clamber to scoreboard. Excellent rotation. If you're really confident doing this, you can shoot while you fly through the air, like shoot the nades or shoot a player and skip the clamber. So a lot of precision dexterity here. You got to frame perfectly, hit this and hit the angle correctly so you can crouch, you know, hold crouch in the air and skip the clamber to the ledge. Even just the rotation in general obviously is very useful, but a good one to try to get down. Now the process for this, I'm sprinting off the edge of the ledge. I'm lining myself up parallel with the edge of the ledge. You can sprint in advance or even just jump without sprint and then sprint right when you hit the floor and you're turning off with both a diagonal on the left stick and a full turn on the right stick and then time that slide as late as you can right before hitting the floor and it's going to give you access to a big boost remember that this is of course all situation specific if i'm lining myself up parallel with a ledge like this i'm very exposed and my reticle's not placed for a fight so i can get myself killed just trying to do this you have to recognize a good opportunity to go for this and pull it off and get the advantage you can approach it the traditional way too like you can just sprint and time your slide and still get a pretty decent boost i almost got the skip right there but in general if you want that really fast access this is a great lineup and something you can approach to any area of this map like right here come off from the edge of it this is a really difficult one to do but i'll try it sometimes it's risky is you're coming off the this edge on the outside, landing right on the edge of it, hitting sprint right before I make contact. If you hit this one correctly, you fly past the dummies. Speaking of the dummies, you can slide off these as well. There's so many different ways you can access this tech and apply it creatively to take advantage of a situation. Of course, this dummy can be pretty difficult to line a slide up, uh, slide off of, line up a slide off of, geez. You wanna stand on the front of his head, basically, like the front side of his helmet. So you have downward momentum coming into the slide and try to aim that slide into the trench. There's a little downward lip on the trench that gives you access to a, a big boost. You can also kind of turn in midair and do like a slide 180 repulse, pick up the OS. I broke down a play one time from a native who pulled that off. A crazy play you can make with this. You can slide off the arms of the dummies as well. This is kind of a neat option to throw yourself into the hallway or throw yourself over to the ramp. Ton of flexibility here. Of course, all of this is very risky and very situational, but that's kind of the beauty of the skill gap is understanding how this stuff works and when to apply it so that you do get that little advantage when it does count. Now, in general, this whole edge lineup setup that we're doing, this is the best way and really the only way to approach curb sliding on some of the taller ledges in the game. And there are not too many of these in live fire that makes sense, but something that's about crouch jump height, like Aquarius, the jump up ledge, for example, is perfect. If you're standing on the very edge of that and you sprint off on a diagonal, hug the wall as you fall and time slide right before you hit the floor, you can fly all the way across courtyard. Really great application of this. This area right here with OS, you can actually slide off this too. I saw Lethal pull this off a few weeks ago in the EU Grunt Classic, but this is really difficult to do. I, I stand, the way I do it, is I'm on the very edge of this ledge and I sprint off on a diagonal and try to perfectly time crouch before I hit the floor, I, it's frame perfect. It's such a tall ledge that you really got to be precise with your timing coming off of this. Maybe Lethal's got a secret. I don't know. There we go. 
Okay, we did do it. You can actually connect it into a snap slide that we'll talk about another time. You can also do it off the back of the OS platform if you're right on the edge once again and you sprint time a slide. It's like the only scenario where you could ever imagine even attempting this would be right after you pick up OS and you're, let's say you're applying it and you crouch jump land on the edge and then somehow hit this slide, which is extremely difficult to pull off and maybe unnecessary to do. You can also slide off of these edges too. If you want to turn things up a notch even more so, you can get even more technical with how you approach these ledges. Something you might notice that I'm doing is I hold crouch before I jump and jump from a crouch position. So when I land on these boxes, I get a lower altitude jump and it lets me hit the object earlier, lets me time the slide earlier. So I'm doing short jumps basically by holding crouch before I jump and then releasing crouch or actually I, I think I keep it held in the air. I release it right before I hit the edge. And it just lets me perfectly jump up to the box without any wasted time in between. You can take this another step further by pushing yourself into the edge of a ledge. You can do it backwards this way too. Is you jump from a crouch position and release crouch. And this has landed me on the edge of the ledge. And then I can curb slide forward off of that. So let's say I'm you know, backing out from a fight. I can hold crouch, use the wall to kind of hold me in place as I land on the very edge of the ledge. And then perfectly hit a curb slide off and fly right back out without compromising reticle placement and while shooting the entire time technically too right like if you're really cracked at this you can perfectly line up your positioning on the very edge of a ledge and then get that really fast boost out afterwards a lot of great potential here to be combat efficient and still hit insane slides and this is good for all of these boxes getting these edge lineups or if you can actually a great application would be over here, like I can off this box, I can sprint time a slide, get a pretty effective launch, and it's a slightly earlier slide timing. Or what I do sometimes is hold crouch and push my body into this so I land on the edge, and then I get an even faster slide off the edge of this over to the ramp using this process. Or you can do something like this, push your body into this one, slide and shoot yourself out. Depending on how frame perfectly you're hitting this, you're throwing yourself across areas of the map, right? Like just kind of setting up these edge lineups and timing the slide out after. So as you can see, this is getting pretty technical, right? Like there's a lot of depth here. And if you apply this correctly in the right way, you can really take advantage of it. It can completely change how you think about map movement, everything. Uh, I switched maps just to show off another little slide that I like a lot is uh, you don't need a lot of runway space. Like even the tiniest little lip or, you know, fin on an edge is curb slide potential, basically. And here's an example. I lined up one off the fin on the ATM here. A great approach to this ATM, if you're just trying to jump off the fin, is to jump into the corner. You always land on that one fin if you push yourself into the corner with a jump, as opposed to trying to line up a difficult jump to hit the center ones. So I do this backwards. I jump and kind of turn in the air. And the moment I hit that back fin, I press forward and sprint, and then slide the curb slide straight through to center map. If you hit that, real nicely you land like right on the generator basically and if you're technical you can connect it into the skill jump and slide out like there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do to get around the map very quick here okay the last curve slide i'm going to show this is the most difficult application of this tech it's the most precise i rarely go for it i rarely see anybody pull it off it's it's just so difficult you got to kind of be a robot to get it down it involves falling off of a ledge from above and perfectly nicking your feet on the edge of a curb slide ledge and then timing slide to boost out. You get a farther boost than any other curb slide with this approach, but it's way more frame precise than, than anything. As far as I'm aware, what's essentially happening here is the combination of your downward momentum plus your heels perfectly nicking the edge of this object. Because normally this, this ledge is too tall to curb slide off of no approach is going to allow you to hit a slide off of it but that extra downward momentum and you nicking your heels basically props you downwards and makes it suddenly possible to access a fast slide now i don't think i'll hit this in front of you guys to be honest i could go for this you know over and over and over again i might not hit it you have to sprint off on an angle so that your feet just you know nick this thing as you fall you can't just sprint off forward because you're gonna go too far so there's like a perfect angle and the moment you feel your heels nick it, you got to time crouch before you hit the ground and you'll fly out. But we're talking frame perfect, like, that was it. But I just 
did it the wrong direction, right? You want to go right to this. So obviously there's a combination of things, not just the, you know, the landing and the timing of the slide, but the angle of it too. There's a lot to get down here. And that's about all I got for today's discussion. I think when you put it all together, it's pretty clear that there is a ton of depth with the curve slide in Halo Infinite. What I like about it personally is on a surface level, it's pretty easy to do. Like the shorter ledges, you just sprint off and time crouch and you get the boost. But if you want to take full advantage of the most powerful slides or you want that extra flexibility with your timing or the positioning of the slide, you're looking at a very frame precise combo mechanic, basically. You're essentially lining up a short jump into a perfect edge stall and then tapping off into a fast fall with a very frame precise sprint slide while hugging the wall as you fall and perfectly gauging the angle and the distance of the slide so you can use it effectively and then try hitting all your shots when you do this too. The highest level application of this technique, in my opinion, is when you can learn to carefully walk out to the edge of objects mid combat and create edge stalls into perfect fast falls and curb slides basically mid fight while strafing and shooting you can set up a lineup on the edge of a ledge and the moment you're ready you tap off sprint slide and launch this is also the beauty of controller movement in halo as well i know that people love to discredit controllers but just the fact that you can tilt the left stick to walk more slowly and precisely move that's a super underrated skill set in halo it's important at a high level as fast and as crazy as I'm sure some of this might look to say a classic Halo fan, remember that Halo is still shielded combat in the end of the day. Just because you got first shot on a fight doesn't mean you're going to win the exchange. If your opponent has better positioning, they can turn the fight around on you. Positioning is and always will be one of the most important factors in Halo. Halo Infinite's mechanics place a higher priority on more fluid, more rotation-based gameplay, but the fundamentals of positioning in Halo are still very relevant and still very important in most cases. And maybe that's a good topic for another time so what i mean to say is all that speed comes with consequences be careful use it wisely if you're looking to master it though i do recommend you check out training mode like you can see in the footage you can turn on a setting called reveal enemy location this lets you see players through walls you can practice sliding and preparing yourself for shots in perfect timing while you fly around maps it's just a good way to get comfortable and get used to the mechanic of course in game that's a very different story but some good practice and that's just the curb slide. If you add snap sliding on top of that, which is even more challenging, connect curb slides into snap slides and then add the repulsor and the grapple and the thrust, you've got an insanely technical game. One of the most technical games I personally have ever played. And I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you like this stuff? I know Halo Infinite is an extremely flawed game and we're, you know, waiting for more content. In the meantime, hopefully some of this tech holds you over. Let me know what else you want to see. I can, I'm thinking of a snap slide masterclass video as well i've got a lot that i've learned about that tech that i'd like to share but in the meantime that's all i've got for tonight so till next time good luck on the way